Hey everyone, Nicole Spohr here today and welcome back to my channel. This is day one of Handmade Hearts and Things, which is my series that I've been wanting to do uh, for a couple of years now and I never got around to doing it. It's gonna be 14 projects that are all love themed leading up to Valentine's Day. We're gonna kick it off with coloring these woolly mammoths from Mama Elephant. These are from one of the most recent releases. They are absolutely darling, and I wanted to share how I did some no-line coloring with Copic markers using these sweet images and creating a slimline card design. We're gonna start with some heavyweight Nina smooth white cardstock. We are stamping two of the images. One has two mammoths and one has an individual mammoth, and we are stamping them with Lawn Fawn Jellyfish No Line Coloring Ink, and then coloring in with our Copic markers. I will tell you that there was some trial and error here, and I left that in because I wanted to show you how you can potentially fix things while you're coloring if things don't go as planned. There is one giant little boo-boo in the little baby mammoth there that's holding onto its mama's tail and I was able to fix it without having to recolor the whole thing. So I was so super glad about that. Really, really forgiving with the Copic markers um, and the no line coloring. I really kind of started light. I did go in with some darker color and add some shading and things. Just really trying to get my bearings as far as that goes before we start adding the fur. E 43, 44, and 47 are the main Copic markers I used here. After I kind of give a nice base color of E 43, and I've kind of outlined the section I'm coloring with E 44 and 47, I'm going in then with E 44 and E 43 and adding flicking or feathering with my markers to give that texture. Not perfect. The great thing about Copics are you can go over and over them and you're not gonna ruin your paper. So I'm going to kind of move on to the head, kind of let some of that dry. It does dry very quickly, but I don't wanna oversaturate the paper. Um, and then I'm gonna kinda, I wanna differentiate the head from the body because we lose that line with the no line coloring. I'm going in with E47 kind of outlining, adding in some darker shading and things. Looks pretty bad at this point, but stick with me. It's gonna end up looking good, I promise, because these images are so, so cute, and I was really thrilled with how this turned out. The tusks I did color with E40. We'll do a tiny bit of shading with E43, not go over the top, but add just enough. And then we're going to shade back in some E44, E43, just blending out those harsh, dark lines of E47. And then we're going to go into the head. And I wasn't totally loving my shading, um, so I kind of ended up going back over this a couple times with E43 to blend out some of those lines that I wasn't super thrilled with, so they weren't so prominent, before going back in and adding deeper, darker shading with E44 again to get that great fur texture. So it's just really consistency and then I think the more you do it, the better and more comfortable you might get with it. I have been doing some no line coloring the last couple of weeks with my Copics, really trying to um, get better at this technique, which is what it takes. It just takes practice with whatever coloring medium you are using. It was one of my goals this year to get a little bit better with no line coloring with other types of coloring mediums, not just the zigs, which I feel super comfortable with. And so this is me working on one of those goals. Let's move on to our cute little baby little R00 for the insides of the ears. I used a black jelly roll pin for the eye on the big guy or big gal. And then we are just adding our shading in. And I don't realize it until later, but I blend over the 
whole thing with E43, including the tusk. So I've lost that. I've lost that detail. That is the big mistake I've made. Plus, I'm not loving uh, the way I started to do the hair texture. Really kind of messed this whole thing up to start with. And because of that, I was a little frustrated. I ended up walking away after I get a little bit further into this. Um, and I came back to it, you know, maybe a half hour later or whatever. And we are going to just kind of persevere. And I decided to take E40 and we're going to try to color that tusk back in. I've completely lost that line. So it's hard to see. Um, I did, and you do see one, but I don't like how it turned out. So let's go back over it with E43. Um, I tried again. Maybe a little bit better. Let's just outline it with E40 for now. And then we can color around it to get that tusk back there. Now, I think if I had never told you guys that this happened, if you had not seen it happen, hopefully it's something that you would never notice. I don't think the recipient will notice. I am such an advocate for finding ways of fixing those things that go wrong when we're creating cards. And so because I didn't really like how the fur was coming, I pretty much shaded over this. Um, I would shade with E43 and then I would kind of let it dry and then I'd come back. And we're going to add that texture back in because it's looking cute now. I'm, I'm much, much happier. Um, we kind I had to fix the ear as well. It wasn't really working the way I want. Um, let's just go ahead and move down to our third guy. If I need to add a little bit more texture to the baby, we can come back and do that in a little bit. So now that I have done a couple of these, I'm feeling it a little bit more comfortable with it. Let's go ahead and I kind of again outline. I like to generally work in a little bit of a smaller area or do the outline and then we're going to shade in and add in that texture. It always looks pretty bad before it looks better. I'm amazed at that. We're just going to add in a little shading. And I started with the wrong direction again. I don't know what my deal was with these two littler ones, but I guess I forgot what was working. So just kind of blend that out. And then let's come in with the shading. It's still not looking great. Let's move on to the head. Which isn't great either. I think I kind of flicked and feathered the wrong way. We're just going to blend that out. Um, I did make sure and outline the tusk there and fix the ear so I didn't ruin those and color over them right off the bat. Still not totally loving that. The direction of the fur isn't going the way I want, but we'll give it a second. Add the eye. Just kind of pulling in the E43 now and pulling out those flicking and feathering lines a different direction. And that one little thing ends up fixing pretty much everything about this and I love it so much more. There we go. That looks so much better and it's really such a teeny tiny fix. Looking good now. I'm loving how my mammoths look. Make sure those tusks are nice and outlined. I felt like um, on the mama they were kind of fading so we added a little bit more shading. And then I did die cut the love you love ya script die from mama elephant from this cardstock and I just kind of patted it back into the cardstock so that I could take our 30 32 and 35 and blend those for an ombre effect for my sentiment right in the card stock. And that's going to be the big part of the sentiment for our card. I love this kind of effect for customizing the colors. Let's go ahead and color our background. We're doing a little scene building 
kind of going back to the my favorite the OG here of what I love to do which is scene building and I'm using BG 72 and 70 to add a little shading to the snowbanks just along the edge give them a little bit of detail this is the slim woodland die from mama elephant probably one of my favorites it creates amazing scene building for uh, a slimline styled card. So if you like to do some wintry themed cards, this is great for that. Everything about this card is soft and pretty. And while yes, this is part of my Handmade Hearts and Things series, it is not necessarily just for Valentine's Day. I purposely am gonna be including some cards in this series that could just be sent out at any time. If you know someone who needs a pick-me-up, this is a kind of card that I would send for that. Um, it's We're gonna stamp the remaining sentiment, sending you some warm fuzzies, which I think is so cute. That's from the uh, Mammoth Love stamp set that the images are from. It's just a great card to send out in the winter time, um, anytime really. And I'm really, think it's nice and simple, but very effective. Definitely can be used for Valentine's, but also anytime. So I'm just gonna play around with my mammoths just to kind of see what kind of placement I want for these guys. Also gives me a good idea going forward for sentiment placement and anything else. I do wanna add some little hearts to the sky. And so I'm kind of playing around with that. You'll notice I, you probably noticed, I colored the hearts on the cardstock that I used for the mammoths, not realizing there weren't dies for those. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I fixed that as well. Let's go ahead and color in our trees with some different colors of earth tone Copic markers. These are E55 and E57. And this is gonna take just a minute, but I love the effect. I have done this before with the slim line or slim woodland dye where I've colored in the trees with Copics. I like to kind of keep it within the stitching line. It automatically adds that nice little border to your card, but you'll just notice that it matches the theme. We have the no line coloring of our critters and now we have the coloring of our trees. And that's really gonna add to the look and feel of this design. And then we can ink blend a nice, soft, pretty background that's gonna be easy to color over because I do wanna stamp some of the hearts from the Mammoth Love stamp set, but it's going to just reiterate that nice wintry look and feel. and it looks messy before it gets better. I did go over this a couple times, just trying to get some texture, but not too much texture, if that makes sense. Whatever just looks good to my eye, I guess. And it definitely never looks great until you kind of get to the end. I'm just flicking in that E57 from the bottom and then down from the top a little bit. This die is such a fantastic die, not brand new. This has been out for a few months now. So in fact, nothing I think that I use today is new. Um, it's all stuff that I've had in my stash that I love. I know I've heard a lot from you guys that you like seeing those kind of cards. Um, new is always fantastic. We always love new, right? As paper crafters, that is so exciting. But it's also fun that maybe if we have some things in our stash or similar things in our stash, um, hopefully this is a nice jump start for inspiration. Or maybe if these products are new to you and you've been on the fence about the Slim Woodland die, you can see that it is just such a useful tool. I will be linking to some um, an additional video that shows this die in use with another scene card just to give you some more ideas on what you can do with this fantastic die 
Now this background I die cut from a Simon Says Stamp slimline nested rectangle. You could also just trim it with cardstock. You don't have to have the die. It just makes it easy because it's pretty much the same size and it's going to fit right behind our slim woodland. And I'm very, very lightly blending speckled egg distress ink. This is one of Tim's newest distress inks. Um, he's coming out with new colors every so often here. And this was, I think, the first one of the newest group of inks. It is a beautiful soft blue. Look how pretty that looks. I really think it ties in nicely with the blue coloring along the snowy edge. So I just gently, gently kind of kept the color more concentrated in the middle and lightened it up towards the top. Then... We want to go ahead and take both pieces. I actually haven't attached anything yet. We're going to take our script die cut sentiment and also the stamped sentiment I want to use. I've not stamped it quite yet, but I want to figure out placement for the hearts from Mammoth Love. This card also only features one stamp set with its coordinating dies. Um, we're not pulling from a, a bunch of different stamp sets for this card. I kept this supply list pretty limited for this particular card design. And I think this same design would work with all kinds of different critters. Maybe you have cute bunnies from Mama Elephant or bunnies from Lawn Fawn or wherever, uh, any kind of wintry quote unquote critter you might have would be great here. I'm stamping these little hearts in the sky. We're going to do all five of them and we're coloring with R35 and R32 to match our love you sentiment. I'm stamping them with the Lawn Fawn Jellyfish No Line Coloring Ink. And then we're coloring those in before we go any further, especially if there's any fixing we need to do. And I did have to fix the bottom of that bigger heart. Looked a little bit wrong. Then we are going to stamp and emboss the sending you some warm fuzzies sentiment. The other options in this stamp set, I wooly love you and I will always be by your side. And I just think they're so beautiful. And just to note, there are three additional mammoth images in this stamp set so you are not limited to just the three i used here and i even think this would be super cute um mixed in with some of your other favorite winter critters from mama elephant i did not add any extras today but i kind of considered it and then i decided to keep it a little bit more on the simple side but i do think it would be darling if you wanted to combine some maybe a little a little fox or or bunnies or whatever it might be. I think that'd be really cute. Stamped and embossed that in white to just keep it all um, flowing nicely, I guess I wanna say. I know I've talked a lot about this lately, but ink choices for sentiments is so important to me. It really should be part of the overall design and, and scene or or just the overall design of the card, if, even if it's not a scene card, and not detract away from it. And where we don't have any outline type of images here, we did no line coloring and everything is soft and pretty, I think a black ink for the sentiment would have kind of been glaring. It would have just really, it doesn't flow as nice, at least to me. Um, and I love the white because it just adds to that wintry, feel of the card. We're going to put a little glue on the back of Love Ya and then tuck that in. We're also gluing down our mammoths. The black gel pen for their eye makes their little faces pop. It's a very small thing, but I highly recommend a black pen of some sort to add that detail back into faces mouths if they do have them, um, all of those kind of things. And then I felt like we needed snow and I didn't really want to do a white paint splatter. I wanted it to be kind of controlled. I'm taking a white pen and we are doing s snow everywhere over the trees, the sky, the mammoths. I want it to look like they're walking through this snowy, wintry type of scene. Very controlled since we're using a pen. This really only took about, in real time, 
four minutes, I think is what it took. So pretty quick. Some of the, the little snow flurries are bigger than others, but look how that one tiny little thing adds to the overall scene. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Handmade Hearts and Things series video featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring the Slim Woodland die that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.